this is quite possibly one of the greatest um hit pieces in fashion i've ever read in my entire life and i think it's incredibly hilarious because it does kind of speak to the general unease and suspicion some people felt in the air when this story initially kind of leaked and went online so i'm not sure most of you know but this guy here called law roach he's a very popular celebrity stylist who's more famous for his work recently with zendaya he went kind of viral a few weeks ago a few months ago where he basically put out instagram post saying that he's retired from fashion because of just you know stress or whatever maybe he didn't really you know he didn't really um expound and kind of reveal the reason why but because he's so well known um for his work with Zendaya and just a popular figure in his own right and stuff he's done on tv everyone's just a bit shocked like oh my god he's he's kind of you know retiring what's going on blah 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 it was a big kerfuffle in fashion everyone was kind of lending their support and whatnot and this came off the back of a clip going viral of him um walking uh, towards his seats to go watch a fashion show. I think it's for Louis Vuitton with Zendaya. Zendaya's in front of him. She goes and sits down on her chair and Laura Roach's chair or seat that he was meant to have is not available. So then he has to stand awkwardly as, you know, Zendaya's sitting down and kind of looking around to see where his seat is. And obviously his seat doesn't, you know, appear from thin air. And everybody kind of felt really bad for him because I think in, in one way or the other, we've all had those situations in our lives where we've kind of felt like we weren't really wanted or needed in the space due to these little micro type of aggression type of thing people do by not having your name on the list not having your seat reserved for you even though you reserved ahead of time or booking whatever it may be called everyone kind of felt a little bit sad and embarrassed for him so seeing that video and also hearing the announcement of him saying he retired everyone kind of put two and two together and thought oh my god the industry has kind of ground down another of our black stylist heroes and it's crazy and it's sad but there were some people also who were thinking this is a bit of a press run this feels a little bit purposeful this feels like he's playing the game and this feels like he's you know this doesn't feel real this doesn't feel authentic there's something a bit sus about this something's up and i guess it's now been proven um, in some part because of this hit piece that is titled law roach and the red carpet pilling of the styling industry and it's really funny because this woman um lauren sherman absolutely tears him apart and essentially says law roach is a bit of a cunt behind the scenes and no one was surprised when he said he retired because he's a nightmare to deal with day to day like he's a nightmare to deal with and i kind of like these things because i feel like in the scene that i've kind of been in look you know loosely associated and and whatnot in my own regard i feel like i've come across many a people who have been this who, who i can kind of relate to no I, yeah i've kind of come across with many people who kind of sound like the way this woman sound, describes law roach and they kind of get away with their you know horrible behavior because they're pretty famous because they're well you know because they're good at what they do or because they just have a name and notoriety in the industry maybe their work isn't good but it's just because they're well known people kind of you know kind of forgive them for their bullshit behavior and it never really sat well with me ever and i think one of the reasons why i've never really been able to really succeed and make it in the scenes that i've kind of been in is because i don't have the ability to kind of put up with people treating me or talking to me like shit just because they're somebody well known or just because they have got a good job on paper or because they have got money or because they've know someone famous i just could never handle disrespect that i felt like or disrespect or just be able to kind of you know smile and laugh at people things that people say just because they're famous if, even if they're not funny i just could never do it and i think it's not a good thing uh, number one i'm not kind of bragging about it i think it's one of my kind of shortcomings where i'm not able to kind of maybe you know um well, I'm not kind of maybe able to kind of put up with things. My threshold for that kind of stuff is not as high as it probably should be. Um, and I think in some ways and parts, if you're in this scene, if you're in these little small subcultures and niches and industries, you kind of have to have an ability to kind of put up with bullshit. You kind of have to have the ability to kind of play the game a little bit. And if you play the game, it can sometimes lead to some level of success, especially if you feel like this stuff is your calling and the stuff that you want to actually do for the long term in your life is probably worth it to just, you know, laugh at a couple of dumb jokes, um, be okay with going to get someone's coat if they tell you to go get it. I don't know, whatever. It probably is probably beneficial, but I just could never do it. And it kind of really, I think probably hurt me in terms of not being able to maybe succeed in certain places and maybe other things also, but I think that maybe it's a main thing. But anyway, the article is absolutely brutal. The first line already, 
the first few lines, she kind of hits it out of the park, right? I'm going to read it here. This is courtesy of Lauren Sherman. Did you hear that Law Roach was retiring? Probably. Do you even know who Law Roach is? <laughs> so bitchy. If you don't before March 14th, if you did it before March 14th, sorry, the celebrity stylist head scratching Instagram announcement made him famous enough for you to know him now. The story remained top of the mind for nearly a month. Surviving Gwyneth Paltrow's award-worthy run of um, ski trial outfits and the spike in popularity of the word capac cap capacious. In short, Law, best known for styling Zendaya, Megan Thee Stallion, Celine Dion, and, uh, and at one point Cardi B and Anna Taylor-Joy, declared just days after the Oscars that his cup was empty and that he was done with celebrity styling. The politics, this is a quote, the politics, the lies and the false narratives finally got me. You win. I'm out, he said, noting that if this business was about clothes, I would do it just for the rest of my life. But unfortunately, it's not. It, <laughs> the comments spread like Ozempic's prescription through PR text chains and celebrity websites with industry insiders, obsessives alike asking what really happened. Sure, it's a tough job, but why would one of the most revered and powerful celebrity stylists want to quit on the spot at the peak of their powers? And that's what everybody was thinking on social, right? Everybody's thinking on social, like, why is he quitting? What's going on? And of course, in that, in those kind of, you know, um, what, what's that thing called? In like a typical attention-seeking way that some of these people are he didn't explain it of course didn't expound on it put out some tweet put out some statement no explanation no more clarification needed just you guys dance with that and get crazy but people were scratching their chin like hmm something's up here it continues roach has since deleted the post i messaged him to ask why and i've yet to hear back and yet he's still at top of the mind just last week, Roach flew to Mumbai to attend an event and where he walked a red carpet with Zendaya. The appearance would help to um, explicate what exactly Roach wants. Sure, he wants to support Zendaya, whose proliferating fame um, has benefited him financially and amplified his own celebrity. But at the end of the day, the guy also wants to be famous too, to be a brand unto himself and to be famous for being famous perhaps so that he doesn't have to, stylist, to be a stylist anymore and famous enough that it's clear that his retirement is actually just semantics. This, again, brings me back to what I said before. There must be something about being famous or becoming no, you know, or, or having some level of notoriety really late in life. There's definitely something about it that breaks your brain. And I think with Law Roach, again, I don't know much about the guy, but let's just double check here. I'm going to guess he's, he's, he's an older gentleman. He's probably older than 20, right? Let's say age. Yeah, he's 44 years old, allegedly, right? Law Roach is 44 years old. I'm willing to bet Law Roach's success like in mainstream culture has only come about in the probably the last 10 years or so maybe even five if that's the case there definitely has be something to be said for the phenomenon of like making it really late in life but then also being the type of person who always deep down knew that you were a star then when you finally do make it it kind of turns you into a bit of a tyrant you kind of turn into a bit of a diva because you're like, I, sh I deserve this. I should have had this way longer, way before. And then usually what ends up happening, like I I've, I've seen before in the industry, you end up getting in the industry and end up meeting some of your heroes and people that you think are really impressive. And you ends up turning out that the people that you think are really impressive and really smart aren't that impressive and aren't that smart. And then it makes you even more bitter and more pissed off that you had to spend so many years on the outside looking in working bullshit jobs not fulfilling your dreams and these are the people that were kind of keeping you away from your dream quote unquote, in a weird way so i wonder if that kind of plays into it that sort of thing where you finally do make it and then you make it and you just become a bit of a tyrant a bit of a diva and you just become a bit of a prick i wonder if that's the thing that happens there and in this case laura roach's case maybe deep down he always thought he was a star also and styling was just an opportunity to kind of get closer to the stars and now he's got that star dust on him he doesn't want to rush it off at all. Roach's behavior in front of camera says in the quote in the article, Roach's behavior in front of the camera and his alleged behavior behind the scenes says a lot about the state of celebrity styling today and what a messy, sordid, unfair business it can be. Um, we've got a brief history of styling there. We don't need to read about that. Um, luxury brands. Oh, actually, the interesting thing about this is just the pay. That is one thing that I didn't really know about styling in terms of pay. 
I thought that was an interesting part. Let me see if I can find it here. There was a part here about the pay word where it's kind of messy how it works out, to be fair. Um, yeah, let's see. It's, it starts about here. <clears throat> Rachel Zoe, who parlayed her work into creating a media brand and other ventures, helped to pave the way, um, helped to pave an entrepreneurial pathway for the micro industry. Her ascent in the late aughts coincided with the regularization, with the regularization sort of pay-to-play model on the red carpet. At the, at first, luxury brands were so prestigious that they did not have to offer anything but a free custom fit dress to talent. However, as the red carpet became more powerful, market tool, top actors used that to leverage to ask for more money. Initially, it was structured like an advertising or sponsorship contract. A star in our campaign wear our gowns at least three times a year over the course of five years and will pay you 10 million. As competition increased, however, the campaigns was no longer always part of the equation. Visit an actress room at Cannes, for instance, and you might uncover five dresses hanging in her closet, each with an envelope containing a piece of paper with a dollar figure written in it. It's likely she'll be wearing a brand that's willing to pay her the most. The rule in general is that it has, if it, it all has a cost, one luxury executive reminded me. This is probably the reason why, this is probably the reason why a lot of the red carpet looks are so horrible. This probably explains it. So imagine if you're an actress and you're in your changing room and you've got five different outfits picked out for you, all with an envelope inside it with a with a with a with a kind of with a dollar amount, how much they're willing to pay if you wear that outfit. Most likely, you would imagine the brand with the horrible with the worst outfit picked out for you or the worst brand will definitely give you the most money. It's just, it's just what it is, right? I'd imagine a Philip Plin probably pays way more than Dolce Gabbana. So then you pick the Philip Plin suit and then you end up looking like, you know, like an extra from the flipping Matrix in a bad way. That's probably the reason why people dress so terribly on red carpets because they just go to whoever pays them the most. Pretty crazy game. It continues. But a cost to whom? This is where it gets tricky. Today, many brands still claim that they don't play for they don't pay for red carpet placements, but most of them will if they have no other choice. And sometimes that means upwards of a hundred thousand for one appearance, and it could be plenty more if it's at the Oscars. Sometimes a brand will bake into another ask, like requiring the actor or actress to post on Instagram and tag their brand, calling it content creation. How the actors, team and hairstylists and manicurists and makeup artists and wardrobe stylists, not to mention all their assistants gets paid is another question. So the brand pays the actress to wear the clothes and then somehow the actor is meant to use that money to pay the team to help them put together the look. But I'm sure there are some actresses out there who are like, it's just clothes. What do I need really? Just get hair and makeup and then get to your friend to just your your most because I'm sure actors have at least one friend who likes fashion, right? And that friend is usually somebody who wears like skinny jeans and Gucci loafers or something. But at least they've all have one friend in their contact list who who can, who can dress well. Just get your friend to come down, you know, and then they can help you out dressing and you just keep all the money. That definitely explains why there's so many terrible looks on the on the red carpet because why would you spend more money if you don't need to? Anyway, it continues. Follow the money. Today, everyone, even producers and and producer spouses, want to stylist for a big awards event. And agencies like the Wall Group, owned by Endeavor, have a deep enough roster of people to help them get dressed. It used to be that the studios would pony up these days. However, the studios only have budgets for the biggest films and biggest stars. More often than not, the talent has to pay for the glam team out of his his or own pocket. Um, something most working artists. Our actors cannot afford or probably don't want to or the brand needs to pay the fee it's a push pull between the brands with actors and representatives negotiate the deals often stylists are the last priority so they can resort to some pretty questionable behaviors many big brands both fashion and fine jewelers put stylists on a financial retainers say 250,000 a year so that their products get prioritized stylists often keep their agreements hidden from their clients and it can create a tension if the client finds out this is really really weird because this also means that if you hire a stylist and your actor and they're on a retainer to like Balenciaga, they may be more prone or more incentivized to recommend Balenciaga clothes to you, even though it doesn't work for you or you don't like the clothing because they're getting paid by the brand to, you know what I mean? That's it kind of, it's not a conflict of interest, but it doesn't actually give you the hope or the satisfaction that they're picking up the best stuff for you. They're just picking up the stuff that people are paying for to get in front of you because you're the one person they can get get the clothes in front of them too, right? 
Anyway, another popular thing is to do a slip the slip the bill for the styling fee to the brand at the last minute, even after the event, so that they have no choice but to pay up. Someone like Roach can receive thirty thousand for one major look. Oh, that's interesting. That's really underhand. Roach made a name for himself by taking a page out of Zoe's self-branding playbook and being the first black stylist to do so. But he's not as well liked as as she once was. Over the years, he has been accused of behind the scenes of many of the worst fashion offences. He's been described as enthusiastically as difficult and defensive by many of designers and VIP publicists I caught up with after his announcement. They said that they often made things more difficult for himself than those working for him absolute piece of shit and again this is why i think it's important to say this thing because i feel like in general people's bad behaviors can generally be called out especially if you think they're doing good work it should be called out so that they can change i feel like people kind of excuse people's bad behavior because they're good at what they do or because they're talented it eventually creates a monster and usually those monsters end up doing things that affect a large number of people and I think most of the things could be avoided if someone just was willing to be brave enough to step up and say, hey, you're being a bit of a prick. You're being a bit of a diva. You're being a little bit, you know, up your own ass, whatever it may be. Can you chill? Can you relax? People don't feel good. Whatever it may be. That needs to be said, you would imagine. But, you know, everyone's too scared and wants to protect their flipping spot. Article continues. At the same time, they still feel like they need him. His proximity to the Zendaya made him too powerful to push back against and many emphasize of his personal struggle as a black person who came from a low-income background and managed to rise up for the ranks of a lit of a of this weird little pocket of fashion where to be clear you need to be difficult in order to navigate all the hard sharp elbows thrown your way so essentially the the thing that probably allowed him you know allowed him to probably step in to the industry right being black and being one of the only black people in the industry um with a certain taste level and a certain ability i'm sure he was maybe afforded some opportunities based on that is also the one thing people are scared about because they don't want to be they don't want to look like they're being racist by pointing out that he's being a prick because he's one of the only few high profile black celebrity stylists out there <laughs> i'm sure he knew that also i'm sure he knew he could get away with way more because of that like oh that's where all that flipping that's what all that flipping stuff kind of has a it's a bit of a double-edged sword isn't it in one way you want to make sure that you have some level of representation in the industry and whatnot but then some people end up taking that representation and using it legitimately like a sword like a shield or whatever it may be to do whatever they need to do it continues not being rich and white poses challenges in every part of the fashion industry but particularly in the realm of celebrity styling stylists are perpetually in a state of uncomfortable fashion limbo they need to be the, near the stars forces them to live in los angeles which is which is the which the paris and new york people view as tacky and yet those paris and new york people still need their looks and connections other than kate young who came up in a traditional fashion editorial and was uh, anna winter's assistant at one point i can't think of another celebrity stylist deeply embedded in the traditional fashion world shirley curata Kur maybe because she's cool and up and coming like daniel goldberg again cool most of them though aren't part of fashion's inner circle and that's really true too i've always wondered there's this other lady too i remember i forgot her name. i think is that riley i forgot is it riley or neve i forgot her name but it's this one lady who's american who styles hayley bieber and i think also stylish justin bieber but hayley bieber specifically because she's kind of well liked online and a lot of people think she has really good style and she wears cool outfits and shit right and for me the one thing that's really interesting is i feel like even though she's american and obviously a big star hayley bieber in her own right and famous and stuff it's weird because there's a real disconnect between her and kind of big european brands Whereas I feel like she does shift more product than probably the stuff that they do themselves in house. Like if, let's say Balenciaga, you know, if she's kind of dressed head to toe in Balenciaga, I'd imagine whatever she's wearing that girls like online and see her wearing, that will probably end up selling out way more because she's wearing it than it would do some random person. But then she's not really in the inner circle of fashion people. Same thing could be said for the stylist. They're not kind of embraced. It's kind of a weird industry. It's like they kind of live in America. They pull their looks from brands in Europe and give them to, you know, American celebrities to wear. But then the European people kind of look down on them and kind of think they're a bit corny. Weird. 
Roach may be a victim of industrial snobbery, but he's also he's also got haters closer to the ground. Many of his predecessors, bitter from losing clients to young, cheaper stylists, resent Roach and the attention he brings to himself, scoffing at his trademarking of the highfalutin term image architect. <laughs> That's like in DJing. In the DJing world, there are people out there who call themselves selectors or crate diggers and stuff. It's like, ugh, like get over yourself. It's DJ essentially you're like a human jukebox basically with taste but that's it you know selector it's a stylist no i'm an image architect i think i'm um, another one is i think photographers like image maker it's like come on get over yourself anyway it continues annoyed by the fact that he wants to be treated like a talent when he is in reality support staff styling might require skill but in the end it's a service job brutal brutal if the history of any indication it's unlikely that roach will be able to turn this brand building exercise into a long-term business and long um how long will he remain in such a powerful position will depend on whether he can maintain a relationship with zendaya and build new ones because the tide is changing once again with a new crop of stylists willing to work cheaper and with the smile rising up yo that's a mad bitchy way to end it but it has got me thinking in general about that quote i always mention about joey diaz where he said to flipping Lee Sayat, oh, the reason why I didn't want to help him was because he didn't want Lee Sayat to basically be hanging around with Joey Diaz and Bill Burr and all these other big comics and think he's made it. He needs to be kind of hanging around with people on his own level. And I think in general, in general, right, I honestly think, oh, thank you, Jay, you're, you're, you're amazing. I, I don't think I'd be good. I don't think I have the patience. I think I can, you know, I can throw out your recommendations to people in comments, but I think in real life, I wouldn't have the patience to be a good stylist. I think you have to be, it's probably like being a good psychologist or something, right? Someone psychiatrist probably, I think. You kind of have the ability to kind of have that nurturing, caring bit about you also uh, and just be somebody's shoulder to cry on. I don't think I can do that in real life personally. I'd get probably annoyed, but yeah, big up to you. Um, I'm wondering overall if that's probably half of the half of the issue with law roach might be that he has been hanging around too much with zendaya and i wonder if that's actually a thing also if you have if you're working in an industry or you have a friend that's really famous or a client that's really famous it can be difficult to know what your position and to know where you stand because you're around this famous person and you sometimes start to believe the gas that you're also as famous as them when you're clearly not that could be a bit of an issue also that he just can't you know because he's been around her for so long he legitimately thinks he's as famous as her when he's not i don't know maybe that's a fact maybe it isn't but i thought that article from that lady was absolutely brutal she tore him apart tore him an absolute new one and he's probably still recovering from it till this day he's probably still recovering from it till this 